several languages so that the camp population would be kept informed about when food is being distributed, which of the barracks was scheduled for bathing, and all other necessary information that was given through the PA system with loudspeakers that were mounted directly on top of the ambulance that I was in. Sometimes later, and unfortunately I cannot say whether it was a couple of weeks or maybe even a month, but the day came when I was given a sheet for announcements to evacuate the total Belgian camp and telling the remnants of inmates of Belgium, which by the way, since the liberation has lost over 17,000 people. In all probabilities, most of them were too weak to be recovered. Others, when they were given, unfortunately, canned goods out of the good-heartedness of the soldiers who saw this terrible condition in the camp where everybody was literally yeah. starving and looking for food, I think by consuming some of these conserved goods and cans <coughs> added to the typhoid-ridden camp and caused additional death and a total of 17,100 people dead were counted after the liberation. For most part, the evacuation went orderly by huge military lorries which picked up in a continuous rotation of in some instances, it was necessary to carry some of the remaining uh, sick and too weak to walk. But towards the end of the day, to the last person, and in some cases, bodies were removed out of the barracks. Then came the order of final search. Soldiers and officers alike went from barrack to barrack to make sure no one is left in them. And when they have completed that sweep, they have put the death camp of Belgium to a torch. They have used flamethrowers every one of the barracks into flames. And I now realize as we were leaving Belgium in my ambulance with another couple of officers sitting at the back door leaving it open so that we have a clear view of the road leading from the death camp to the new barracks which were similar upon the ashes of my life, of my family, of which I now was the only one carrying this name. 36 families that I remember that carry that name left me that and only that. I started anew. As I arrived in the new Bergen Belsen camp, I was given quarters near 
the headquarters of the command of Bergen-Belsen camp known as GB6, which was located very centrally. And I continued to repay to the liberators with whatever I could. I would act as interpreter for the camp and was involved in a few undertakings in gathering information, listing people's name and having those lists compiled by the British and letting this information go to the American zone as well as to any other camp that requested that information. And while the memories of the death camp of Belzen never will leave me, I must admit that on the ashes of that terrible experience that impossible to describe, I have been greatly rewarded, not only by having seen the end of Hitler and his Nazis, but the fact that shortly after my liberation, the best thing in my life occurred to me. I met my dear wife, and I don't think that any other price would have redeemed all the tragedies that I had to go through being at that time 17 years old. I also now after 50 years realize that there may have been some sort of a guidance from above that paired me with my dear wife to bring to this world a wonderful family. In Bergen-Belsen, my wife and I, upon being married, and we were the first marriage in Belsen after the liberation, in 1946, we decided not to have on this blood-soaked earth any children until we get to a country where we can establish a family in normal conditions. I also must not forget that my generation Although coming out of this desperate time has lived to see the birth of the State of Israel, which is something that was always dear in our family, even when I was a small boy, this was one of the foremost important things that my mother taught me, Eretz Israel. North. In 1950, we have emigrated to the American continent and finally decided to settle in this city, Toronto. We not always had luck with everything. In fact, we went through a tragedy, even though we were already free and happy, but life is like that. However, when I look of what I have, I must sometimes admit it was worth it. I have my dear daughter Sharon, who married a nice Jewish boy. Dr. Aaron Jessen, and they've given me six wonderful grandchildren. 
the youngest one of which is known as Shlomo. He's now six years old. And when I look into his blue eyes, things come to my mind. Was it worth it? And then the final warning of my father, stay alive. The day is coming when you'll be free. And I then remember our famous prayer, Am Yisrael High. They are circumcised, so clearly an anesthetist is not the solution, yeah. Okay, thank you.